Hello, Brian McCarthy here from Bold and Break, and I'm delighted to be back with our first video in 2023. This will be a two part tutorial series. We're going to be exploring how to use splines with the volume measure in Cinema 4D. We're going to just do kind of an experimental video. The first one, we're going to show you what you could do with splines. We're going to use dynamics, we use the volume measure. It's going to be fun. And then in the second part of the series, we're going to make something like this. That will be using um, text with most spline and the volume measures. That's quite cool. So without further ado, let's get started. First thing we want to do is get our volume builder, our volume measure. We're going to use a helix and put our helix into our volume builder. We can already see how powerful this is because Cinema 4D is generating geometry already. Stick your volume builder into your volume measure. So we then want to see how our typology is working. Do that, press NB. This is important because if you're animating this, the topology will get a bit jittery when you're using the volume measure. It's important to see that so you don't get any nasty surprises in your render. We can start building out a, a few systems here. We can keep things simple though. We're going to press Shift C, type in mask, and we're going to get our spline mask. Stick it into our volume builder, stick our helix in there. Then we're going to get a circle and bring that into our spline mask. And you can already see it's merging these together using the spline mask. If we were to subtract that, and then if we we're to, by just using the spline mask with the helix and circle, let's just use and. And sometimes you can't really predict what it's going to do. Um, and if we were to bring our helix outside of the spline builder with the circle, let's do that now. You get a different look. It's just taking both geometries and meshing them together. Whereas with the spline mask, you can instruct it to perform a mechanism like subtract. Another thing you can do with your splines and your volume mesher, we're going to delete these two spines. Let's use a flower again, put that in. We want to use a cloner. You can mesh together these nice patterns. Put this into a linear object and maybe bring that to zero. And bring in a circle. And you could do some really cool stuff here with your objects. Like you could create, I don't know, you could create like a pattern. If you want to duplicate that, turn it into displacement map on that on a texture. If you want to create this kind of you know, metal mesh pattern, chain link fence, loads of stuff you can do super quickly here. Uh, let's delete that and let's try radial. See what that does here. And this gets quite cool because you know you can quickly create these almost lathe-like organic shapes. And if we bring our flower outside of this. But still put that into our volume builder. Rotate it 90 degrees. Bring that up. You're building out this cool shape. Could use this as a multitude of abstract shapes or items within your scene once you remesh it. Okay, cool. Let's get on to some animation now that you've seen what you can use to build out objects and meshes. Let's bring back in our helix, tweak the values a little bit so we get something interesting. You can animate these and keyframe these parameters within the volume mesher and get quite organic look. So let's right click on our helix here and add rope tag and you will see that that will drop immediately, which is not ideal. Press shift C and type in gravity. Put in minus 1000. That will start to Load upwards. Now, as I said earlier, it's important to see your geometry and topology. And you can see this is getting quite jittery. We will show you how to optimize that in part two. You know, if you were to render that, that will look quite jittery. That might be a look you want as well. You know, you could, might be going for a claymation look or, you know, you might be going for something organic. Let's put in a rotation force into this. Shift C again, rotation. Let's leave our angle speed there. Interesting, and that is quite cool. So it's rotating the spline 
into itself and then you get this crinkling effect we're to change our parameters of the rope tag here and um, what else is cool about this is if we were to put another object into our scene here let's go back and we, let's say we rotate and your starting position will affect how this animation works let's say we want we have this here we press play what is very cool about this is these these meshes will like amalgamate into each other they'll kind of join and glob together maybe bring up the angle to 45 degrees and make and you'll see that's quite cool because that's rotating more i could see this being used in medical visualizations maybe a bit And even if we were to put in some turbulence, again, shift C, how would that work? Let's have a look. No. There we go. So you can see the turbulence is moving these objects and you get this almost silly string and they're interacting with each other. You get a really, really cool and um, organic look to that. And finally, we're going to use a cloner with dynamics. We're going to actually keep these on and we're going to bring back in our cloner here and we're going to maybe use this arc. Right click on the arc, go to simulation and pick rope again. Nothing is happening and that is because we have these arcs in a cloner. What we want to do is we want to put the rope tag on to our cloner instead of the individual object here. You'll see that when they, if they hit each other, they will actually, let's make sure they hit each other. Let's put in a tractor into the scene. And again, shift C and just type in a tractor. All these objects here can be accessed through the simulation tab here in forces there. That's all I'm pulling from here. So let's uh, put the strength of our tractor up to a thousand. That'll probably pull them in way too fast. I'm not pulling them in fast enough but it's keeping them kind of floating. Let's add another zero. Always add a, another zero. And that is pulling them in. And you can see when they hit each other, they just kind of like stick to one another. It's quite cool. That is kind of what I want to talk through. That's I want to show you kind of different techniques, how to create objects, how to use the simulation tags. Lots of fun. It's only kind of a very surface level overview. You want to be going into these, playing with these values, playing with these values. We can look in the second part of this tutorial, which is a more practical use of it, where we're going to get that text spline and we're going to animate using most spline. And I'm going to show you a few tricks how to optimize that, you know, get the, the topology looking good and we don't get those jittering effects. Thank you for everyone that subscribed, comments and like, and please continue to do that. Thank you for watching and goodbye.